Hey, what's up guys? Tyler here with Secure Team. Some new ISS footage uh, has come to light. This was captured by Street Cap One, uh, another UFO investigator. You can check out his channel down in the video description. Does some great work. Uh, and as you just saw here, we have multiple objects momentarily making themselves known um, outside of the International Space Station. Certainly nothing new. Uh, these things are out there in space, and um, as you can see, these things appear very briefly, and it would look like there's more than one object here passing by. And this is one of the reasons, and very well likely is one of the main reasons, why they are going to be heavily censoring the space station footage starting within the next week. And I know that there's been a lot of petitions put out trying to stop them from censoring the ISS footage, and maybe it'll get through to them. You know, maybe they'll keep the footage up for a little bit longer, but I highly doubt uh, that we will have an unfiltered view for much longer. Uh, there's just too much activity happening up in space, and for them to give us just a 24-hour live feed, um, it, it's allowing for too much attention. And the more attention that this footage gets and that these UFO sightings get, the more pressure that is going to be put on them to come out with a story and confront the, the questions that we all have about what they're hiding. So great capture by Street Cap One. Um, speaking about these strange things in space, if you followed our channel, we've shown you all of the past mission videos and pics documenting the, the endless UFO activity that's been happening up in space. For as long as we've had the technology to take photographs, this stuff's been happening. We've talked about the Black Knight satellite, um, the fact that there are objects up in space that have been captured, that have been identified by amateur astronomers, photographers, radar operators, uh, that appeared in space long before we even had our first satellite up there, long before we even had the technology to lift an object into space, and we know that they're up there. And today I want to talk to you guys about one of these mini space mysteries that occurred back in 1967, where an object actually came crashing down, entered into our atmosphere from space, crashing into the northeastern African desert of Sudan. Now what you're seeing here is actually a report on this object that, oddly enough, has actually been removed from the Department of Defense website with which it was originally held. And it goes into the fact that an unknown object in the shape of a cube and weighing three tons crashed into the desert in North Africa. Now, they say that this cube was made up of smaller, tightly packed oblong cubes measuring about one inch by two inches each. But the total size of the object was not reported, nor do they give us any information that would allow us to identify this and where this cube came from, this three ton cube. Another interesting thing about this object is that it was covered in a strange, silky material. There were no markings on the object that would allow us to identify it. No photographs of the object have ever been made public. There is no description or information uh, about an impact crater or anything like that. And they've reported the object to be a satellite. The only problem with that is that satellites, especially back then and still today, are not designed to survive re-entry into the Earth's atmosphere. For those of you who don't know, aluminum melts at 350 degrees Fahrenheit, which is much less than the temperature that you get when an object re-enters our atmosphere, which can go up to as much as 3,000 degrees, completely melting, destroying any Earth-made object that was re-entry. So whatever this thing was, it was not a satellite. And, it, and again, it had this strange, silky material on the surface of this thing, which also had the strength to survive re-entry, to survive these 3,000 degree temperatures. So we don't know what it was or where it came from. What we do know is that the U.S. government did know and does know about its existence uh, from this telegram here. And again, the original link to this can no longer be found. Because when you try to go to the original link, this is what you see here, a 404 not found. Typical of the U.S. government when they, um, when they want to take something down, we've seen this 404 message uh, more times than I can probably count. And so now all we have are copies floating around the internet. So it's very strange. I mean, we, we barely had the technology to lift such a heavy object into space back in the 50s and early 60s. 
nor can I find any utility that the US government would have for a three ton square metallic object covered in a strange silk material. And they've got this thing stored somewhere after all these years, and uh, it's just yet another mystery. More mystery objects out in space that at times will enter our atmosphere, and all we have are bits and pieces, so very mysterious. It's The story of this strange cube uh, is right up there with the Black Knight satellite, which we've done videos on in the past. And um, it's just more proof that there's so many things happening, and there's just so much about space and what is in space that we don't know about. Bill Nye uh, did an interview the other day. It was actually just posted on YouTube. And if you don't know Bill Nye, Bill Nye the science guy, who if you grew up in the United States, you'll know as uh, the scientist and uh, television presenter who actually had his own show on TV up through the 90s. And in this interview, Bill Nye was asked about aliens and whether he thought aliens existed. And more to the point, whether the government knew about aliens and was keeping it from us. And this is where I disagree with Mr. Nye, because in his opinion, he said that he does believe in aliens, he does believe that there is life out there in the universe. Uh, however, he boldly claimed that he did not think that the government was hiding the truth about aliens or that the government knew about aliens. And his reasoning for that was that the government wouldn't be able to keep it a secret. He said that if the government was hiding information about aliens, that there would be tens of thousands of people in the know and there would be no way for them to keep such a secret. Hence, uh, apparently that means that the government knows nothing and is hiding nothing. So um, according to Bill Nye, you can all put your minds at ease. Our good government is not hiding anything from us. They're not lying to us. Um, they know nothing about aliens. <laughs> yeah, th that's just wow. Um, first of all, don't underestimate the government's power to keep things from you. They are without a doubt lying and hiding the truth about alien activity and the contacts that we've had and that they've had with objects that they've recovered, things that have happened, the government knows. And what most people don't understand is that when you have a secret, you don't need to have tens of thousands of people knowing about it. The, the government, and few people understand this, is very keen to compartmentalizing things. This way, secrets do not get out, where in which you have much fewer people knowing about a certain secret, and you keep other people in the dark. You, you only tell them so much. And former government and military individuals have come out and have leaked information and have said, we do have alien technology in our hands. There were aliens on the moon Yes, we were instructed to edit out structures in lunar photographs when we walked on the moon. And we have recovered alien craft and have been in visitation. So, um, you know, Mr. Bill Nye, God bless him, is just being a little bit too naive here. And putting a little bit too much trust in his government. And you know what? Good for him. Ignorance is bliss for many people. Now, we have an update to the story we did in our last video where we were talking about the over 300 reindeer that were found dead in a big open field located in Norway and I'm sad to say that it's happened again. A new story has just come out. 19 cows have been found dead uh, to again what's being purported as due to a lightning strike. So here is the new story uh, put out by NBC12. This happened in Hallsville, Texas. And they found these 19 cows dead, all laying under this tree. Uh, some sources are saying that lightning struck the tree, killing nearly 20 of these cattle. Uh, apparently there, there may have been a witness who said that they saw a single lightning bolt strike a, a tree close to these cows. It may have been the tree that they were standing under and um, knocked them out and killed them. You're seeing images from that here. So this is really freaky to me. I mean, when does this ever happen? Especially, I mean, we just did the story on the 318 reindeer who were found dead in Norway, and now just days later, 20 cows are found dead here uh, due to the same thing, a lightning strike? What is going on? What is going on? Visit the link down in the video description. I mean, what can I say? What more can I say? Other than it's strange that we're now having mass animal die-offs, not to poison, not to hunters, but to lightning?
Here is a new photograph I was sent by a viewer out of Houston, Texas, capturing another one of these ring-shaped UFOs sitting in the sky. Now, this was sent over by Mr. Tim Thompson, who said in his email that he was driving downtown through Houston uh, yesterday on the 30th. He was on the highway and he noticed this object on his left. Uh, he said he couldn't get a video due to low storage on his phone, but he did say that it was moving, sort of bobbing left to right. And so as we zoom in here, you'll notice that this is the exact same object that has been captured over Texas over the past few years. Here are the earlier images taken in Texas by other sources who've also seen this object, and you can see typical ring saucer-shaped object with lights wrapping around the outside. Um, th in fact, this is the same description that Mr. John Lennon gave back in the 70s in New York City, uh, where he described a cone or saucer-shaped object with a ring of lights around the outside of it. And this was way before drones had ever been invented. Another very anomalous story that's been hitting the web lately is, is with regards to this uh, strange floating island in Argentina. You're seeing the Google Maps view here, and I will put the coordinates to this down in the video description. Uh, but there's been a lot of news lately over the past few days surrounding this strange, uh, what they're calling a floating island, which some are saying is a secret entrance to an underground alien base of some sort. And that this ring of land, which really just doesn't belong there, will open up at times. And it was just by luck that the satellite snapped a picture of it on Google Earth while it was opening. Now, of course, it could be natural, uh, but we don't know at this point how the island got there, uh, what is causing it to float like that, and what's in the waters underneath it. There's actually some uh, people who are trying to crowdfund uh, an expedition to the object. They've actually already done one expedition where in which they visited this so-called floating island. Um, one of the things they said was that this is in the middle of nowhere and that when they tested the water, they found the water to be strangely very cold, whereas everything else in Argentina is humid and hot. So, I mean, there's attention to it. These researchers are hopefully going to try to get, I guess, some camera equipment down into the waters to see what's underneath it. Uh, but again, very, very strange. Check it out yourself down in the video description. Now, the last thing I want to show you guys today before we go, and I have a, a movie recommendation for you guys, uh, is these strange images, which, by the way, are real. These are not faked, of these fish that they've been catching that would appear to have human teeth. Now, these fish are real, and the teeth they have are real. These are actually called red belly paku, and they're actually indigenous to South America. And some of you may have even heard, there was a story about this that came out a few years ago, and the strange name that has been given to this fish, uh, <laughs> they're calling it a testicle eater. They had found that this fish was uh, invading the waters off of Scandinavia, and uh, apparently these things like to swim up and uh, bite you in the uh, holiest of the holies. So <laughs> I, I'm telling you, I, I couldn't make this stuff up myself. I mean, it, this is a, a real thing. They're calling it a testicle-crushing vegetarian monster fish. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> because the fish has these teeth, apparently, so it can bite down on nuts. And I I'm talking about actual nuts, like peanuts. <laughs> and, oh god, this just keeps getting better and better. Um, but it eats, like, berries and nuts. Literally. And, uh, apparently, they have been finding this fish in the lakes surrounding Michigan. And wildlife officials have confirmed that fishermen have been catching these strange human-teethed monster fish out of lakes, ponds, and creeks in at least 27 U.S. states. And it's just creepy. So apparently, you know, these fish have made their way over, um, likely by people who've been keeping them as pets who have then been dumping them into the waters over here in America. And um, all I know is I'm going to be wearing uh, some extra protection if I ever go swimming uh, in a lake or a pond again, that's for sure. Now, this reminds me of a film that I really want you guys to see. It's scary. If you like scary movies that are kind of like documentaries or mockumentaries, you'll really like this. And I'm telling you, you guys know I wouldn't let you down. But if you haven't seen it, check out this 2012 film called The Bay. Now, it used to be on Netflix. I'm not sure if it still is. But this is a frightening film. And it's basically, it's, it's like a documentary, kind of like found footage 
where chaos breaks out in a small Maryland town on the coast due to an ecological disaster happening in the waters. Now, I don't want to really tell you too much about this. You just kind of have to watch it and, you know, it builds and builds and builds before you finally know what's going on. And um, this is just one of the scariest films I've seen because it could actually happen one day. It's really, really creepy. So grab some popcorn, sit down with your significant other or, or watch it by yourself. Either way, check it out. It's called The Bay and it was released in uh, 2012. So be sure to check that out. Let me know what you guys think about all these strange stories we've talked about in today's video. And as always, be sure to share, like, and subscribe on your way out. I'd really appreciate it. So thanks for stopping by. Check back in just a bit because we've got a lot more coming and stay safe. Thank you.